Wonderful Sunday morning. You may be seated. Amen. I don't know about you, but the game is important tonight, but the chili is more important. Can't wait for that, uh, right? Amen. Good to see everyone here today. And um, uh, yes, it is, uh, of course, a Super Bowl Sunday. I, uh, you know, you kind of try to avoid it as a pastor, but you just kind of just got to give into it because everybody's just like wearing t-shirts and talking about it. And, uh, but no, it's, it's a good day. We're, we're glad that you're here if you're visiting with us for the first time. And we just pray that today you'll be blessed. And maybe there's something that we do or say that really just speaks volumes of God's loves to you and that you really feel God um, moving in your life. And more importantly, we just pray that God meets you where you are, whether you're, um, you know, wherever you are. And, and if you're sick in your body, we're just praying that God heals you and touches you like only he can. How many can say amen? Only God can do those things. Amen. Uh, before I get into the word this morning, I want to just kind of like uh, let you in on a little conversation. Uh, uh, a pastor friend of mine texted me this morning, and uh, he actually texts me scriptures almost daily, and uh, it's just really encouraging. And today he texted me and texted me the scripture, and it says, For those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah 40. I was like, that's encouraging. Wait. <laughs> right? It's like, okay. So I text him back. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. We are now members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. <laughs> we got a thing going on. All right. So just wanted to throw that out there right today. Yeah, so uh, anyways, that's kind of how my world works on Sunday. Uh, many of you are lost in the spirit. I'm re- you know, going back and forth text with a pastor um, about football. Anyways. Amen. But yeah, it's just uh, really um, good what the Lord is doing. We're excited and um, moving forward with uh, the projects at the Outreach Center and things are coming together. We're kind of getting our, all our uh, ducks in a row, as they say, and, and uh, we've got permits and inspections and things like that to look forward to and try to work out. But i um, just so excited about what the Lord's doing. Um, I'm also just really um, kind of encouraged by what the Lord's doing on a bigger scale, on a national scale and also a global scale. Just so many uh, awesome stories and testimonies. And uh, I don't know about you, but you ever just hear like incredible stories that God is doing all over the world and realize, wow, God, you're so big, you're so great. And you're doing so many awesome things all over the world. If you're discouraged uh, by what you hear and see around you or maybe even on TV, I want you to get plugged in with uh, kind of a group or a ministry or a Christian that really just uh, knows and hears some good stuff going on and encourage yourself in the Lord and just say, Lord, you're so big, you're so great. And uh, how many know it's important to encourage ourselves in the Lord? So I want to uh, just encourage you to do that. But one of the things as we were just uh, this morning, I kind of woke up just really thanking the Lord for his power, just thanking the Lord for his grace in my life. How many can say amen to that? How many can just thank the Lord for the mercy of God in your life, the long suffering of the Lord in your, the gentleness of God in your life, and and just the goodness of the Lord. Um, Sometimes if you're going through a hard place, you're going through a hard time, it's just good to focus on God's goodness. It's sometimes it's so healthy, isn't it? Just to uh, just to say, Lord, I'm going to look at you, you know, your goodness. And so I just want to thank the Lord for His power, for the power of His love. Amen. If, if, you know, when you meet Jesus and you realize how much God loves you, it rocks your world. It changes you so much, doesn't it? Amen. Come on. How many can thank the Lord for his love? Amen. How many thank God for the power of the love of God in your life that he has for us as people? Amen. And as, as humanity, I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for grace, the grace of God, the mercy of God that is new Every single morning. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. Amen. And I'm thankful for the, the power of grace that changes me in my heart and my life. I'm so thankful for that. So thankful for the power of God in my life and how it's, you know, you look back over time and you just say, wow, God, you did that. Lord, you, you worked that out. You, you brought me from a place of, of obscurity and, and hard place, Lord, but you brought me out. And you did good things. How many have ever had that conversation with the Lord? Lord, you did it. Amen. How many love to say that to God? God, you did it. Amen. And, and it was by your power and your grace. And uh, I just love the way that the Lord moves in our lives. And 
It just fills us with His Spirit and how that there's just this, uh, uh, as, as John, the writer of John, this revelation that John had in John chapter 1 when he was talking about Jesus and it describes uh, really kind of the, the story uh, of the Gospel. And he's talking about Jesus and he said that Jesus was the Word that was made flesh and lived among us. In the beginning was the Word and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. And then he talks about Jesus and the very end of that verse in verse 14, chapter 1, he says that he is full of grace and truth. How many are thankful that Jesus is full of grace and truth? Amen. How many believe that God is full of grace and truth? Amen. This morning. Amen. Come on, I'm not going to get too deep on you this morning. I'm just thankful for the grace and the mercy of the Lord. Amen. That he is full of of grace and truth. And when I think about those words, I think there's two words that are synonymous with that, that go with that, that mean that. That's what it means is the love and freedom that's in Jesus Christ. Come on, how many are thankful for grace and truth? Amen. It's love and freedom. That's what it is in Jesus Christ. It's the love of God and the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why we uh, sing songs and worship the way we do because we are celebrating the fact that Jesus is full of grace and truth. Amen. How many believe that? Jesus is full of grace and truth. And the two go hand in hand. Because really it's, uh, we celebrate the love of God that brings freedom and the grace that brings truth. Amen to us. And so the two go hand in hand. And so this morning, I just really want to talk to you this morning and, and preach out of John chapter 8 that Jesus is full of grace and truth and so do we need to be. Amen. We need to be filled with grace and truth. How many believe that? How many can just feel the Holy Spirit moving in your life that it's time to be filled with grace and truth? Amen. The two go hand in hand. And Lord, I want to be, I want to move in that. I want to, I want to uh, kind of live in that, in that um, kind of that arena of love and freedom that's in Jesus Christ. And as a Christian, that's what it's about. That's what we live by. That's what we go by. That's kind of the, kind of the crux of our faith and our foundation is the love, the grace and truth and the love and freedom that's in Jesus Christ. In John chapter 8, verse 31 if you'll turn or click there. And then what I'm going to do is read just a couple of verses. We'll share a little. I'm going to go back to this um, and just kind of read the rest of it, which is really good. How many know it's good to put everything in context? Amen. But really, if you read John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, and I love this scripture, Jesus was preaching. And at the beginning of this chapter, Jesus had um, really talked to the woman that was caught in adultery. How many remember that story? And he said, you know, uh, neither do I can't condemn you. Go and sin no more. And and a tremendous picture of redemption and forgiveness that's in the Lord. And, and then Jesus begins to declare his deity and de- begins to declare his lordship and how that he's God. And, 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 he, and he really begins to go into the sermon about um, the redemption that God brings and, and that the plan of God. And so he begins to talk about grace and truth. And in verse 31 People began to believe on Jesus, by the way, when he began to preach. And so Jesus turned to those who believed on him and he said this, If you continue in my word or follow my teachings, then you are my disciples indeed. Then you are really my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will what? Set you free. It will make you free. It will set you free. The truth will set you free. And so the point... Of God's truth is what he's bringing out here, is to lead us to repentance, to save us from the curse of sin and death, and to deliver us from the behavior of sin. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You're not free until you're first captive, right? Come on, somebody. You're not free until you're first bound by something. Is that right? And aren't you glad that Jesus comes? He is full of grace and truth, love and freedom. He doesn't just say He loves you. He sets you free. He doesn't just present this, this, hey, I'm going to do this someday. I'd love to set you free. But He just declares His love and then His love works and it sets us free. But the truth is freedom is what Jesus is saying here. And that's so important to know. The truth brings freedom. If you follow the teachings of Jesus, you will be free. How many believe that? How many have ever seen, have witnessed that in your life? Man, uh, the more I follow the teachings of the Bible, it, it, I, I understand the truth, I know the truth, and there's a freedom that comes in my life. There's a liberty that I have in Christ. Anybody? There's a freedom that we have in Jesus. And so it's about the salvation and liberty of Jesus Christ. And so as Christians, because we're motivated by love, we reach out to everyone and we share the truth that will set them free. 
How many know that? Amen? Come on, let me say that again, because I'm talking to Christians this morning, mostly. Is that Because we're motivated by love, we reach out to everyone, and we share the truth that will set them free. Amen? How many have found that the truth sets you free? Amen? And so I believe so many times the argument against Christians is that we don't love and accept. And we don't accept and we don't love. Amen? But how many know Christians can love and they can disagree with actions? We can love people but not accept everything. Come on. Just because you love everyone doesn't mean you have to accept everything. And so, and it's funny because the irony there is that people that say that about Christians and Christianity that we don't love and accept, the irony is that if you don't believe the way they believe, you're in big trouble. You better believe the way I believe or else. But then they turn around and say, we don't love and accept. How many have ever had a conversation with those kind of people? Wow, I, this is really confusing. How do I figure this out? But I love this because uh, John chapter 8 really describes grace and truth together. Let's read it, the rest of it. In uh, verse 32, you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. Verse 33. And they said to Jesus, the Pharisee says, but we are descendants of Abraham. We have never been slaves to any man on earth. What do you mean set us free? Jesus replied, you are slaves to sin, every one of you. And the slaves don't have rights, but the Son has every right there is. So if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Amen. And so this is a revelation that he was giving that Jesus is full of grace and truth. He is full of love and freedom. Amen. And so this is the tremendous truth that we have as Christians. And so the Bible makes it clear that Jesus forgives sin, He removes sin, and then He what? Changes you. You are transformed from the inside out. Is that right? Come on. He said, I'll give you a new heart. I'll give you a new spirit. How many believe that when you got saved, he meant your brain was changed. Your way of thinking was changed. Amen. Someone said, I don't want to be a Christian because you get brainwashed. That's exactly right. Our brains get washed. Our brains get scrubbed and cleaned, and we've got a new way of thinking. We've got a new heart. Come on, somebody. We're a new creation in Christ. All things are passed away. All things are what? New. Amen. And so He forgives us, and He removes sin, and He transforms us. That's the power of grace and truth in our lives. Amen. And so also He sets us free from sin and sinful motives, actions and behavior. See, sin isn't just a, a state of mind because there's, there's behaviors and there's actions that come with it. Come on, somebody. There's character that you have in sin. And so how many are thankful that if Jesus can set you free from, from a sinful attitude, sinful actions, He can uh, restore in your life or put in your life righteous actions, Right? Amen. If he, if he kind of forgives you of sin, what does he do? He replaces it with truth and goodness and love, right? Amen. And so we know that. And so we believe that Jesus is our Savior. We don't just say that. We don't just come to church to be religious. We're here because Jesus is our Savior. Is that right? Amen. Full of grace and truth. Full of love and freedom. And so grace is that love that God expressed. Let me just say this and ask this question, though, to especially Christians. So we know that the Bible says in John 3.16, for God so loved the world. How many believe God loves you so much? I mean, loves you so much. People are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, loves you, is passionate about you. Like, loves you, crazy loves you. Two people, that's amazing. The rest of us are going to, you know. Okay, so, so, but let me ask you this. So does the fact that God loves me does that save me? Does the love of God alone save me? For God so loved the world. Does that mean God loves the world? Does that mean everyone's saved? Does that mean everyone's going to heaven? Does that mean the world is going to heaven? No, we've got the action. Grace is that action of love. But freedom happens as a response to that action. For God so loved the world that whoever, what, believes in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. How many know there's an action there that changes you? So the love of God is present, but there's a truth of God that comes with it. Amen. And so Jesus is full of grace and truth. And so when we say that God so loves the world and the fact that God loves everyone, how many believe that with all their heart? God loves everyone. Thank God for that. Amen. That does alone does not save me. I have to believe and confess my sin, believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that He is, amen, 
Come on, the expression of God's love for me. That His sacrifice on Calvary was for me. And I receive that. I believe in that. I receive that. Anybody? Right? And because of that, the Bible says I'm saved. Whosoever will believe with their heart, confess with their mouth, the Lord Jesus shall be saved. I believe that. But there's a, but here's what we have to understand. I'm going a little bit in, in kind of another direction. The love, there's love from God to forgive sin. So the love from God forgives our sin, but the love for God avoids sin. How many believe that? The love that I receive from God forgives me from sin. I, I love that. But the love that I have from God makes me want to avoid sin. Anybody? Amen. There's just something about it. I love what Paul said in Romans chapter 6. Starting in verse 1, when he was talking about the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and how that now we're made righteous through Jesus in chapter 5, he goes on and it says in chapter 6, verse 1, he says, okay, because of this, what shall we say then? Shall we continue on sinning so that grace may increase in our lives? By no means. We are those who are, have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? If you're dead to sin, how can you live in it? And then in verse 15, he asks the questions again in a different way. He says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means, God forbid. Amen. How many believe that God, grace, comes in your life to, come on, to save you from sin or, to, or doesn't get you into sin? It doesn't, it doesn't polish sin in your life. Amen. The grace of God is there that you can deny sin. Right? Amen. And that's what he's saying. And so because of the grace, because of the truth, because of the mercy of God, should we stay in sin? No. We really can't because of the love of God changes us. I mean, how in the world can you stay in sin when you see the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for you? How can you stay a sinner when you realize the awesome, powerful mercy and love of God? It blows you away. All of us here, at some point or another in our life, have had this revelation of the love of God. Come on, that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. We wouldn't do that for people, but God did that for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the power of God's love is acceptance and transformation. Did you know that? How many are thankful that God just loves you right where you are? right where he found you. Some of you were in a, in a, in a gutter. Amen. I don't know where you, God found you, but he loved you right where you were. With all your stuff, he loves you right where you are. Amen. I love that about the Lord. That's the continuing mercy of God. But the power of God's love is acceptance and transformation, but the power of God's grace is in forgiveness and enabling, empowering. Right? So God's grace enables me to live holy. Not, I can't do it on my own. I can't do it without the power of God. Come on, somebody. I can't do it without the teachings of Jesus. I just can't do it on my own. Amen. I couldn't save myself, right? There's nothing I can do that would, you would try to get me into heaven without Jesus Christ. I couldn't do it, right? Amen. Not enough works could do that. And so the power of God's love is that acceptance from the Lord, but that transformation from Him. That's part of His love. Amen. How many know God doesn't just say He loves you? He shows you He loves you. Amen. And I love that about God's love and God's grace in my life. But, you know, uh, one of the things I just want to make very clear is that God does not keep us in sin. He does not keep us. He can't. That wouldn't be love. That wouldn't be grace. Come on, somebody. God does not keep us in sin. He does not encourage us in sin. He does not strengthen me in sin. He does not enable me. He does not promote it. He does not endorse it. That's not grace. That would not be grace if God kept me in darkness. If God kept me bound to sin, that would not be love. It would not be fair. It would not be just. It would not be right for Him to call Himself a loving God if He kept me in darkness. If He kept me blind and bound and cursed, that would not be grace. That would not be love. Come on somebody, amen. That's just not love. He doesn't do those things. It's not the nature of love. And God is love. It's not the nature of grace. It's not the nature of truth. That wouldn't be, God wouldn't be true. Come on. He wouldn't be, why? Because he, he would say, I love you, but He wouldn't show it. And that wouldn't be truth. Right? Amen. And so the question comes to me in our hearts today is, why in the world, for me as a Christian, would I want to see anyone stay sick, broken, or hurting? 
Would that be love? Would it be graceful for me to do that? Would I be a person that would be full of grace? Could I call myself a person that loves other people if I wanted people to stay in sickness, to stay in their brokenness, to stay hurting? That would not be loving at all. How could I say I was a loving person? I just couldn't. So guess what? God can't. We can't say that God is love if He wants to keep people. So He doesn't want to keep people in sin. His grace comes to get us out of sin and keep us from sin. And the truth makes us free or continues that freedom in our lives. As we follow the teachings of Jesus, that grace that we received, we remain in that freedom as we follow His teachings. It sets us free. Let me just go on a little bit more and just ask you this, that if if sin enslaves us, if sin binds us, if it gets us lost, if it separates us, if it condemns us, it destroys us, why would I encourage anyone to stay in sin? Why would I do that? If there is a permanency of hell, why would I encourage anyone to stay on that path towards hell? Why would I want anyone to stay in the lifestyle of destruction? How would that be loving of me? How can I say that I love people? How can I say that I have the nature of God and I'm a Christian? How could I say that? Many of us would say, well, you can't. That's just because that's not love. That's not just, that's not truth, right? Come on. Would I stand on a bridge and hold somebody's coat while they committed suicide? Would that be loving? No, it wouldn't be, right? I'd have to give them truth. I'd try to help them. I'd try to do what I could to save their life. That would be loving. That would be truthful. Come on. Would I keep people in witchcraft? In alcoholism, in an abusive relationship. What if a woman came to the church and said, "Listen, I'm in an abusive relationship. I'm, uh, I don't know what to do. Would I? I mean, how lo- would that be loving of me to pat her on the back and say, "You just go home and and keep getting beat," because that'd be the right thing to do, right? Come on. Do you think God acts like that? God doesn't do that. God doesn't say, you know what? Stay in your sin. Stay in a destructive behavior. Stay in that 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 area, that arena of destruction where you're you're hurting yourself and you're hurting those around you and your broken relationships and brokenness in your life. That's not love. That's not the nature of God. God wouldn't do that. He just wouldn't do it. We know God to be that way. He says He's that way. We know Him to be that way. Amen. Think about it. Is it encouraged? I mean, is is it right for me to encourage people to stay in that lifestyle? It wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be right. I mean, think about it. What I say, you know what? Keep, keep on beating people. Keep on hating on people. Keep, you know, keep that, that thought about blowing people up and having and that, that love and that hatred that you have and that love for destruction and violence. Keep on that path, brother. You're on the right track. I mean, that'd be so wrong. As a child of God, as a Christian, for me to do that, to encourage people. Think about it. If, how about if I encourage people to join a, a church or this church and promote them in leadership if they hated people. Think about it. Let me just give you a little picture and think about how dysfunctional this would be. I mean, if I had someone come and let's just just say, just for the sake of argument, if half of our church was of Asian descent and I had a person come in and they they came to the main membership class and they said, you know what? Uh, I just want to join this church. I want to be in leadership, but I just one little secret I have. I hate Asian people. And every time I see him, I want to kill him. And I have this plan, I want to bomb him. I mean, for me to say, hey, you can be a leader in our church. Why don't you be a member? In our... Guess what? That's not going to work. Come on, somebody. That's not going to work. I mean, somebody that, you know, is a, is a, you know, I want to deal drugs. I want to, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, keep doing it. Just keep doing it. In fact, I'll hook you up with some people in our church. And that's silly, isn't it? But It's just not, because it's not logical. It's not right. It's not, it's not right. It's not loving for me to say, keep in that abusive relationship. Keep being dysfunctional. I don't encourage people in their sin. That's not right for me to do that. It's not the nature of my father because God doesn't do that to me. God doesn't do that to humanity. He doesn't say, you know what? I'm happy and satisfied with the suicide rate among teenagers. I want them to keep doing it. No, he speaks to his church. You've got to do something about it. Get out and preach the gospel. Rescue these teenagers because this is right. This is good. This is grace. This is truth. Amen? It's not God's nature. Why doesn't God do those things? It's not his nature. It's just not his nature. I mean, for, for me to say, you know, just somebody comes in and says, you know, I, 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 I struggle and I've been arrested for pedophilia and I, I've had these struggles and I, and I don't want to give it up and I'm, I'm just keep growing in it. And, uh, and, then, and then for me to put them in the children's ministry, over the children's ministry without supervision, I mean, come on, would that be right? Does that even make sense to you? 
So it should make sense to us that God wants people to stay in their sin. God, that one, God wants to keep people in their dysfunction and their, and their brokenness. Why? Because it's not God's nature. The nature of God is come out from among them and be separate and I'll receive you and, and, I'll, and I'll make you sons and daughters and, and I'll give you the joy and the peace and the love that you need. Amen. That you lack. That's God's nature, isn't it? It's not real love. I mean, for me to say that and to people to stay, stay in your dysfunction, stay in your brokenness, that's not love. And it doesn't work. Ultimately, it doesn't work. For me to say to somebody, stay in your disruptive relationship, your destructive relationship of marriage and your abusive relationship, it's not going to work. Stay in that company and keep uh, stealing from them. Keep embezzling money. And if you're a gambler, here's 20 bucks. Put it on the Eagles. How many know that's just not... I would only do five, by the way. Anyways, (laughs) sorry. How many know it doesn't work? This doesn't work. It doesn't work. And so we know that's not God. And see, there would be no validity to God's love if Jesus didn't die on the cross. There'd be no power to God's love if it didn't change me. How many know what I'm talking about? It'd be a state of mind. It wouldn't be something that I could feel and sense and see in my own life. And so it, it wouldn't be God's love. It wouldn't be God's grace if it didn't change me. If Jesus didn't die on the cross, then we can only say that God thinks about loving you. But because we know that God for so loved the world, we see that Jesus died on the cross. He showed that He loved the world. He showed His love. He showed His truth. He showed that He is a God of grace and truth. Think about it. If I were to open a hospital, and, and I were to, to put on the outside that's a hospital and, and big lights and Grand opening, and I would invite everyone in the city that's sick and hurting and, and their body, and, and I would invite every sick person, I'd build all these rooms and fill all these rooms, and yet never provide any type of medical care. If I would ne- and not even provide doctors, not even have a band aid in that hospital, then people would say, Well, you, don't, you can't call this a hospital, you're not helping anybody. There's, no, there's not even band aids in this hospital. How can you call this a hospital? So we can't call ourselves Christians if we don't live the teachings of Jesus and love the way God tells us to love. Come on, somebody. I mean, people say, well, how can you call that a hospital? Well, how can I call myself a disciple or a Christian if I don't accept the truth, if I don't follow the teachings, if I don't respond to the grace of God, if I don't show grace in my life and the love of God is reflected in my life, how can I call myself a Christian? Right? It wouldn't work. It wouldn't be God's nature. It's not real love. That's just, that's what we could say about it. I mean, it just doesn't add up. It doesn't work. And so we have to say that because God is filled with grace and truth and because He is filled with love and it's about freedom of Jesus Christ, we have to say that the Bible is true. That we've got to keep the moorings and the teachings of the Bible because that's where the freedom is. Amen? That's where the love is. The love of God is in the Word of God. The freedom of truth is in the truth. Amen. That's where freedom is. That's where love is. And I believe that in our culture, in our day today, that people want to redefine the love of God and what love is all about. I mean, we're letting people define it for us as a church who don't know God, who don't know the love of God. They have no no concept of the richness of true love. And yet we're allowing them to define and redefine the love of God, the grace of God, the truth of God. Amen. But how many know as the people of God, we got to stand on what's written, what's been established, what Jesus has already said, not what He's making up through these so-called prophets today. Amen? Amen. And so I'm getting to a point, but I believe that, you know, how can we say that we love people if we don't share the truth with people? If you keep the truth from somebody, how can you say that you really love them? Well, I don't want to offend them, but... But it's true, then, then how, if we really love people, not only are we going to go to them and accept them for where they are and who they are, but then we're going to have so much love for them, we're going to share the truth with them. See, as a Christian, if someone would ask me, how, you know, how do you feel about abortion? How do you feel about homosexuality? How do you feel about crime? How do you feel about this? For me to say, well, for, personally, you know, I, you know, no, that's not my answer. My answer is, well, the Bible says this. Because I believe in the teachings. I live my life. This is not just something I read every once in a while. This is 
the way I believe. This is who I am, right? And we have to say that that's part of the truth because we know that truth is freedom. Amen. Let me just say a few things but about truth. The truth is freedom. So we read the scripture. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Notice what Jesus teaches us here. That the first step to true liberty is to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's the first step. The first step of freedom and true liberty is not that, oh, I can do what I want. Okay, okay. God loves me no matter what I do. That's not the first step. That's not the first thing. We've got to come to this, that the truth will lead to freedom. That truth, the truth that Jesus is the Son of God, that truth will lead to freedom. Amen? Right? Do you believe that? So following the teachings of Jesus is a love for God, our Messiah, our Savior. When I follow the teachings of, of Jesus, it's not because, well, my church told me to, or, well, I got to, you know, whatever. No, it's because of a great love I have for God. When I, when I follow the teachings, and why? Because it sets me free. The more I get into the truth, the more I become free. The more I discover the truth, the more free I become. Come on, how many have found that to be true? You don't get more bound. You don't become more confused by the truth. You become more enlightened by the truth. The truth is what is good and is just and is right. And one of the things as Christians we find in the teachings of Jesus is that we celebrate life. We celebrate biblical gender. We celebrate marriage and sexuality according to the Word of God. And not only do we celebrate it, but we are to uphold the teachings of that. We are to defend the truth. We are to defend those teachings with our lives. Amen? Why? Because it's about grace and truth. It's about love and freedom. And if we don't tell people the truth, we must not really care. Amen? So that's what it is. And so we celebrate these things and not only celebrate them, but we uphold them, we defend them, we teach them, we promote them. I don't promote sin in people's lives, but I do promote truth. Amen? Why? Because that's what God does. He doesn't promote sin in my life. He doesn't put a stamp of approval of sin in my life. Come on, Christians, does he? No. So I don't do that, but what do I do? I put a stamp of approval on the truth. I promote the truth. I encourage people in the truth. I want to strengthen you in the truth. Amen? How many believe that? Amen. And, and, you're great, and, the, the, and, the, and the joy of your salvation, I want to encourage you in that. I want to strengthen you in that. Because I know that's where the Lord is leading you. And I know that's what's right, and that's what's true, and that's what's love. Amen. You know, there's things in the Bible, speaking of the truth, and how the truth is freedom. There's things in the Bible that, <laughs> that I've realized in the last couple of years that just don't need my opinion. They don't need me to re-examine them, to discuss them for hours, to, to flip them inside and out. Why? Because they're just so clear. It's just truth. Come on. I don't need to have this discussion group and and deconstruct my faith over one scripture. It's clear. Now there's things in the Bible that are mysteries, the Bible says, and there's things that the Spirit opens up to me. And as I walk with the Lord and get into the Word, I I learn these things. Yeah, I I dig into them. I I, kind of like make sure that I'm not thinking like Western cultural and put them in that context. I want to make sure I'm seeing in the biblical view and seeing it at that time and who wrote it and all that good stuff. But how many know there's just some things I don't need to argue about, discuss? It's just clear. It's just clear. I mean, it's right there. And then we want to like act like it's not and it's a mystery. But it's, there's some things that are just so clear. That's what makes it truth. It's, you know, the word truth it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's kind of hidden. and only, you know, It means open. It's, it's everyone can see it. It's known by all. That's the truth. That's the nature of truth. And so, uh, how many believe that truth is freedom? Amen. And so, one of the the truths that we come to realize when we get saved is that we believe on Jesus as our uh, our Savior. We follow His teachings. And the the truth that we find out sets us free. Amen. I'm kind of bringing this down to a point here, but I believe that Jesus came to save us from sin. And He came to save us in our situation. I believe that Jesus came to save us from the curse of sin and death. And He came to change me. I mean, no, grace and truth is about change. How can you encounter the love of God without changing? How can you say that you're full of grace without experiencing any change? It's impossible. Grace and truth, love and freedom is about change. Because God loves me. He doesn't want to leave me like He found me. 
He's got a new purpose, a new identity, a new, crea- a new creation. He wants me to be born again. Regeneration of my spirit and by the Holy Spirit and regeneration and renewing. That's the plan of God. How many believe that? He came to save us from sin. And so today, with that being said, and, and the truth that God is, it says in His Word about Jesus is filled with grace and truth, and it's about love and freedom. Today in our culture and our society, there's something that's growing in the church and becoming very popular in the church. And I just want to take a few moments and address that as the pastor today, that there is a, a, a system of a beliefs that um, really is about affirming the full inclusion of, of, of those that are gay and lesbian, bisexual, transgender, non-binary people in the church. Not just affirming, but also uh, a kind of promoting in church membership and ministry and leadership. And let me just say this as the pastor, that we are a grace-filled, truth-embracing community. That's who we are. We are committed to reaching out to everyone, sharing the truth of God's love. And because of love and truth, we affirm the biblical teachings of membership, ministry, leadership, and marriage. Amen? And so I believe it's important that we don't just get swept away with what's going on in culture and their redefining love and truth for us. That we remain close and steadfast to the teachings of the Bible, of the Word of God. Amen. I don't get everything right all the time, but I want to be close. Amen. Let me just say this in closing, that everyone and anyone are welcome to our church. But attendance does not qualify you for membership in Christ Jesus. Attendance does not qualify you for leadership in a Christian church. I mean, no, we've got to be born again. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you receive the remission of sins. Amen. And you receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're baptized. When you're baptized in water, you're baptized into Christ. You become members of one another. That's membership right there. You don't give money to a church and then you're a member in the body of Christ. No, you're baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ. You're brought into the family of God. You're members of one another. Amen. And there's qualifications of leadership and there's gifts and callings that, uh, that we have to do it the Bible way. We do it the biblical way. I can't do it the way you feel. How many know that the, the love of God is not based on my perceptions in life? By my likings, by my desires, that's not, God does not uh, kind of shape His love in my life by my perception of God or my perception of truth or my perception and my passions. He doesn't do that. See, the grace of God doesn't come into my, doesn't, isn't trying to, I'm trying to conform the grace of God to fit my lifestyle. The grace of God comes in my life to empower me to conform to His lifestyle, His way, His truth. And that's grace and truth. Come on. It's love and freedom at the same time. Many people say, well, Christians don't accept. No, we love like nobody's business because we were loved when we were unlovely. We love, the Bible says, as Christ loved us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's how we love people. We don't wait for people to come to church, get all cleaned up and everything. Listen, you're welcome, right? Come on, you're welcome. Any event we have, any church service, any gathering we have, everyone, anyone is welcome. But we also believe in the truth of God's Word that membership is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That we love people so much that we cannot stand to see someone Stay in sin. I'm not going to encourage people in sin. I'm people are going to come in and say, you know, I, I, I'm gay, I'm, I'm trans, I'm this. I'm not going to say, stay in that. I'm going to promote that. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to strengthen you in that. No, I'm not going to do that. Someone says I'm a murderer and I'm a, or I'm a rapist or whatever. I'm not going to say, good go and stay in that. I'm not encourage them in that. I'm going to, not going to promote that. Why? Because I love them too much. And I know God loves them and God does not promote that. And God wants that to change. And the only way that can change is conforming to the teachings of Jesus, submitting to the teachings of Jesus and surrendering to the love of God. I mean, that's how do we make it more plain than than really that? Being saved. Saying, Lord, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. And one of the things as Christians, again, I want to state this, that we're motivated by love. And because we're motivated by love, we reach out to everyone Hear me, everyone. Can I please hear an amen? We reach out to everyone and we share the truth that will set them free. I love people too much to pat them on the back as they leap into hell. I can't do that. I can't do that. 
Come on, somebody. I can't do that. I love them too much. Amen. And I love the church too much. And I love uh, you know, people too much to say, it's okay to stay in brokenness. It's okay to stay in your sickness and your disease. It's okay to stay hurting and, and, and hurting yourself. It's, I can't do that. How many know what I'm talking about today? Why? Because I know Jesus. And Jesus is full of grace and truth. Love and liberty is in Jesus Christ alone. Can we stand on our feet today? Amen. You know, I don't know your journey. I don't know where you're coming from, what's going on in your life. But I just want to say this. And we want to pray for you today. And in ending, we have a team that comes up front. And they're just so great and so powerful. They just love on you, pray with you, whatever your need is. But let me just say this today, that <clears throat> closing, I can't do this and I can't share these things with you today without letting you know that God wants to save you and deliver you today. We want to give you that invitation. We want to give you that opportunity. That if you're bound in your life, possibly by suicide and thoughts of suicide, maybe you're here today and you're just completely obsessed with hurting yourself, cutting yourself, whatever, whatever, just hurting yourself. You don't love yourself. Nobody cares. You feel like nobody cares about you. Nobody understands you. You're all alone. Maybe there's been some tremendous, tremendous hurt in your life. And you're feeling like you want to end it all. You want to just, maybe you feel like people would be better off if you weren't around. Nobody would miss you. Nobody would know. I want you to know today there's hope in Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ wants to deliver you from that deep depression. Those thoughts of hurting yourself and ending it all. I'm here today. There's a, tell you, there's a room full of people here today that have found there is hope. There is more to life. You've got better days ahead of you. You've got good things ahead of you. God's got a plan for your life. So if you're here today and you've thought about taking your life, you've thought about ending it all, and you're so depressed, I want you to know you can be free today through Jesus Christ. We want to pray with you. We love you. We care about you. Amen. We, we believe that you can be free today in Jesus Christ. You can experience life and life more abundantly. There's a room full of people here that one way or the other, we, did, we didn't feel that life was worth living until we found Jesus. And Jesus makes life worth living. That's the answer you need today. Maybe today you're in the room and you say, Pastor Matt, I'm, I'm gay. I'm bound. I, I, I'm, I'm confused. I, I don't know what I am. I, I, but I've, I've lived a gay lifestyle. I want you to do something. I want you to know something. God loves you and he wants a relationship with you. So I've been confused. I don't know what I am anymore. I don't know how to define myself and the pronouns I should use. And all these things. I'm confused by what I'm hearing and about myself, I'm confused about this. I want you to know that the Lord Jesus Christ has the power to, to dissolve the gray clouds in your mind of confusion of who you are and who you were created to be and who you should be now. The Bible says that God created male and female. And when He created man, He put a strength and a glory in men. When He created woman, He put a strength and a glory in in women. How many? Come on, I know what I'm talking about. And there is a strength and a glory in being a man. There is a strength and a glory in being a woman. And when you found, find the, the true identity in Jesus Christ, you will be set free. There'll be no confusion in your life. There'll be no... I mean, some of you say, I, I've lived a lifestyle. I've had many relationships. And I know it's, it's not God. I know it's not good. And I know, I know it's, the Bible doesn't approve of it. I want to do something about it today. I want to change my ways. I want you to know there's hope in Jesus Christ today. There's liberty today. There's freedom in Jesus Christ. And maybe some of you say, you know what? I've been addicted for a long time. I can't shake it. I can't. I try. I try. I try. I, I, I'm so addicted. I'm so bound by this thing. It's destroyed my relationships, destroying my, my, my life, my mind. I, I'm just, I don't even know what to think anymore. I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know where to turn. I want you to know that Jesus Christ can set you free today. Today. Grace and truth are here. The love and freedom that's in Jesus Christ are right here for you right now. Amen. I don't care if you've been in witchcraft and maybe you're an atheist and you're, and you're the biggest hater of God. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you. We love you and we want to pray with you. We care about you. We, we don't, we're not these people that are just going to stand and judge and say, oh, well, you know, you, you just need to leave this place and do your thing and get away from us. No, you need to come in. You need to come close. You need to lean in a little bit. You need to find out who Jesus is and discover that he is full of grace and truth for you. Can you say amen?
I don't know what you're going through today. But God wants to set you free and save you, deliver you. He wants to give you a new heart and a new mind. Amen. He wants to deliver your mind from just obsessive thoughts, oppression, anxiety, overwhelming thoughts of destruction today. Jesus Christ is your answer today. Can we pray? Let's bow our heads. Lord, we just thank you for your word. I thank you that you are filled, completely full. This is your nature, grace and truth, love and freedom. And Lord, I, I speak out of experience, personal experience. I, don't, I, I speak out of your word, Lord, that you've said it in your word, but then I saw it in my life. I've experienced you as the one who gave me grace, showed me grace. I, there's nothing I could do, nothing I could do to deserve the mercy of God. You just did it because you love me. Lord, I didn't do anything special. You just picked me. You just chose me. I don't even understand it, Lord. That's your grace. And now you bring me into a place of truth where I find out what you want, what you desire, what, who you created me to be. That's the truth. The truth is that you have a plan for me. You want me to be saved and be your disciple. Follow your teachings and tell other people about you, Lord. I thank you for your truth. Your truth sets me free. Your truth, Lord, like the culture out there today, it confuses me. But your truth sets me free. And I thank you for it today. Amen. Just keep your heads bowed. If there's anybody here today that maybe in the last several weeks, days, you've thought about taking your life. You've thought about ending it all. You don't think people care. Maybe there's something in your life that happened that is just so tragic. Hardly any one of us could stand it. But you're living through it. There's somebody here that said, yes, I admit, and I need help. I want you to just slip your hand up if you've had thoughts of suicide and ending your life. We want to pray with you. Is it you today? Is there anybody here that said, I need Jesus so much? I need peace. I don't have any peace. I don't have any love. I don't have any security in my future. I just don't know what's happening. I need truth. I need Jesus. Is there anybody here today? You'll just slip your hand up. Say, will you pray with me? Is there anybody? Anybody here today? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Can we take a few moments? All of us in this room know somebody that's in those conditions that I've mentioned today. Let's pray for them. Come on, take a moment and just pray for them. Lord, we pray for their salvation. Pray for their rescuing. Pray, Lord, that they would see and know the love and the grace of God and the truth of the Lord. Lord, I, I, I pray for those that are fighting and resisting. I pray for those that are haters of God. I pray for them, Lord. I bless them today. You said bless your enemies. Love your enemies. Lord, I do that. I pray that they would find your truth, Lord. I pray, pray that you would bring people by their path that would talk to them about the Lord over and over again. I pray that they would have dreams and visions of your goodness and how much you love them. And the dreams that I would have as a child as you were standing at that door calling my name over and over and over again. Lord, I don't know how you want to do it, but Lord, I pray you would just draw them in. Use me. Use me. Use my family. You, use us as the church to reach these people who are broken, who are lost, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're rescuing teenagers from suicide. You're going to rescue... Amen. Adults from brokenness, Lord, and alcoholism, Lord, and addictions. Thank you, Lord, that this is what you do. This is who you are. You just set the captives free because you're full of grace and truth. Love and freedom is in you today. I pray for them. I pray you would just help me reach them through social media, through interaction, Lord, through a card. However you want me to do it, Lord, I'm so willing to reach them with your love today. And I thank you for it. And I give you the praise and the glory for everything you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody share, said, amen. amen. Can we give the Lord a praise this morning? Amen. And thank God for hearing our prayer. Amen. What's up, fam? This is Michael. Thank you for joining us. If you love what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button, the subscribe button, then the bell notification with all the notifications on so that you can be informed on every time we post new content. If the Lord's placed it on your heart to give, you'll find that link down in the description below. Don't forget to follow us on all of our other social media platforms so that you can be up to date on everything we're doing here at River Valley Church. Most of all, if you need someone to stand with you in prayer, Click the link to our website. You'll find contact information. We want to get you in contact with prayer warriors who are going to stand with you in your time of need. Thank you for joining us today. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you next time. God bless.